masterclass number nine is what to do when things are going wrong. Now, Paul, this is a open book again because it's not just form. You could be injury, confidence. There's, there's lots of things that can go wrong with a darts player. Very much so, and I think a lot of people in the past who have talked about you know how to improve. This is the one thing that nobody talks about. Um, if things are going wrong, you need to find a way back. And first and foremost, if you aren't enjoying the game because of what's going wrong, it's time to take a step back from things. Um, I remember when I was younger, I was playing county darts and absolutely flying, but over the course of a season, I really started to uh, not enjoy the game. And my first instinct was to take a step back. Don't be afraid to not play for a little while and let the hunger come back. Uh, that's what I would say. And there are players out there that I know who love this game and that's their biggest fear that they can't actually play anymore. But first and foremost, don't be afraid to take a little break now and again. Then from there, obviously, I'm guessing it, you have to try and work out what's going wrong so you can then address that particular problem in your game or confidence or whatever it may be. Yeah, um, we live in a society now where it's okay to talk about things uh, in regard to your feelings. Now, I'm not just talking about technical stuff here because there are coaches out there who can look at your actions, see if something's broken down, see if something's going wrong. But from a mental perspective as well, I've, I've spoken to a couple of young players over the course of the last 12 months, they think, well, technically it's there, but mentally something's missing. If you feel that there's something missing or something's going wrong mentally within your game, and we may be just talking about someone who was playing locally, they might just have a mental block against a certain opponent or a certain team or you know their game in general. Talk to someone about it. And I'm the kind of person who will be happy to listen to someone like that. And you know, through social media, I'm happy to post something back to give them that little bit of extra, um, you know, pointing them in the right direction. I suppose the two standouts at the top level is obviously Luke Humphreys had the courage mm. to speak out after bottling it up mm -hmm. for a while, which is obviously great for the rest of the darting world. Mm. And James Wade, because last year we could all see it, his arm was too high yeah. and step back two or three months and it was back to the way it should be. Do you know what, um, I had a chat with Adrian Lewis recently and I was uh, talking to him about the darts he was using earlier in the 2019 season and I said, didn't you realise that your darts were spiking in the board that were going into vertical? And he said, why didn't you tell me? And I said, Adrian, you're an opponent for 127 other players, come on, I didn't want to give them an unfair advantage here. But um, you're right with the weird thing that technically his address position was too high and people did tell him. I think Wayne Model came out and said it on, on Sky Sports. I said it on the European Tour. I could see it. He was bringing it too high for address and he was bringing it back too low. And it just wasn't working. Um, if you feel that something's wrong, by all means, go and ask. But say to your teammates, say to your friends, if you see something that's going on with my action, please tell me. They do want to know. But the most important thing about this is if you do feel something's wrong, don't, don't be afraid to talk to someone about it. What else can go wrong in a dark player's arsenal ring, apart from obviously confidence and things like that? Well, I heard a great saying the other day about confidence, that if it was in a bottle and someone could market it, they'd be a very rich person. It's not defined in certain terms. I think confidence is the one thing that fluctuates more in sport than anything else, and especially in a mental game like darts, which is probably 80% mental, 20% ability, when you've got the ability, it doesn't just disappear. It's that old saying, isn't it? You don't become a bad dart player overnight. But it's about, again, writing things down when they're going right. If they're going wrong, write them down and find out how you can make them better. Confidence doesn't grow on trees, but it does grow. You may have to start small, but it is going to grow the more you do something in the right direction. Make good decisions. Don't make bad ones. And if you make a bad decision, just stop and then start again. One thing that I think you were guilty of as well was playing through injuries, which mm. again, is something that's going wrong. If you've got a muscle problem or something like that, mm. you need to stop and get it addressed as well. Yeah, Yella Klaassen came through um, a really bad wrist injury. I, I saw pictures of his wrist you know, post Premier League matches and it was just, how are you doing this? And he just needed to have that operation. And I think we're still seeing with someone like Yella, the um, next, version of himself still a great dart player but um you know when you have an injury don't be afraid to just stop you don't see footballers going on the pitch with a broken leg you don't see dart players 
throw darts at a board with a broken wrist. Uh, if it's a small injury, which they generally are in darts, things like tennis elbow, which is going to happen through repetitive strain. Um, we've seen broken ankle through Simon Whitlock. He played through the pain. I think that was slightly idiotic, but it was a world championship after all, so we can probably forgive him for that one. If you've got something wrong, take a step back, put it right, and then come again. The clock is ticking on life, yes, but on darts, it's a bit of a slower clock. Put it right before you do yourself some serious damage.